Council. Um, I'm going to be uh, asking uh, Bob and Azad, uh, the, uh, the, execu the executive uh, secretary of organizing the U.S. Peace Council, um, and uh, he's going to speak to you in a minute. So we're just here to say, you know, uh, the hundreds of billions of dollars that we spend every year, uh, you know, murdering people around the world, this is only empowering the, the weapons and oil industries, taking control of our society. Um, making it more militarized, killing people of color. We need this money for the things we need here at home. So, um, I'm just gonna come up. You can use you can use either mic for both lives. Welcome to NYC Spring Action 2018. Run the war at home and abroad. Yeah. On behalf of the organizer, organizers of this rally, which includes almost all of you, I would like to thank you for your participation and invaluable support and commitment that made this rally possible. Let me begin by condemning in the strongest terms the Trump administration's criminal, illegal, and unconstitutional attack on Syria. This attack was in clear violation of UN Charter and international law and was based on no evidence of involvement of the Syrian government in this gas, alleged gas attack on April 7th. Let us, yes, raise our unified voice and collectively demand U.S. hands off Syria. U.S. hands off Syria. U.S. hands off Syria. U.S. hands off Syria. This gathering is an unprecedented and historic achievement for our movement. For it's the first time that our fragmented and compartmentalized peace movement have agreed all organizations to work together and demand an end to U.S. wars at home and abroad. We have come to realize that the principal cause of all of our crises that our country and the rest of the world is facing with today, be it economic, social, environmental, and humanitarian, can be traced back to the imperialistic war policies of the United States government. And that the only way we can solve these problems and crises is to put an end to these imperialistic wars. It took a persistent effort to convince everyone that the unity of the whole movement is key to achieving this goal. To convince everyone that we should work with each other on what we agree on and respectfully recognize and work out our differences within a unified, unified movement. It is this common understanding that has brought us together today. As of today, several hundred organizations have joined and we hope more will. But this historic action is just the first step toward unifying our whole movement against imperialism and war, against economic, social, racial injustices, against all forms of violence, against minorities, and against the destruction of our planet. Let us all take this moment to commit ourselves to maintaining and safeguarding and strengthening this unprecedented unity and to bring, and bring those who are not part of us today together. Our unity is a prerequisite for our success. We cannot win this struggle separately from each other. Let us work together from now on.
Thank you. Hello, hi, good afternoon. I'm Naz Martinez and I'm buying with Bayern USA and I'm one of the co-chairs. So I just want to start with another chant. Um, it is right to rebel, U.S. go to hell. It is right to rebel, U.S. go to hell. Coalition and a coordinator of No Foreign Basis Coalition and hands off Syria campaign. Hello, here we go. You look great, but this is the first step. We are going to come together, as Bayman said, with more and more unity until the peace movement in this country is the vast majority. Because the sentiment for peace is the vast majority. Bayman mentioned what's going on with the bombing that took place in Syria. Some of us had a sigh of relief because we saw that it was a limited strike. But don't breathe too hard yet. There is still an American armada, the largest armada since the Iraq war that is sailing towards Syria right now. That war and that attack is not over and we must be vigilant in the streets across the country. And we are across the country. We are in cities all over the country for these spring actions. I know it doesn't feel like spring, but they tell us that it is spring. And besides being vigilant about Syria, we have to look at what's going on in Palestine where protesters who are unarmed are being shot down. They are protesting in the land of Gaza and they are being hot shots taken at them by Israeli soldiers. And we cannot stand for it. The world cannot stand for it. And we must say no. But the wars are only not just around the world. They are right here in this country too. We have a militarized border now. The troops are sent to the border. Let's remember that. Let's make common cause with the people who are fighting against cop killings in their communities from being deported and against all the wars around the world. The U.S. has military in 172 countries. 20 times the number of foreign military bases as all other countries in the world combined. What right do we have to do that? Let the American people say no. Let's say no right here. Thank you for coming. Be vigilant. Continue to fight the wars at home and abroad. And we can only win because history is on our side. Thank you. My name is Grishy Kopp, I'm with the People's Power Assembly, and I'm also one of the co-chairs. I'm now introducing Sarah Founders, the co-director of the International Action Center, journalist for Workers World Newspaper, and coordinator of UNAP, No Foreign Based Coalition, and Hands Off Syria Campaign. <laughs> the U.S. war machine from Syria to Korea to the Philippines. End the U.S. war machine from Syria to Korea to the Philippines. End the U.S. war machine from Syria to Korea to the Philippines. To everyone who's gathered here today from so many different struggles, we don't know from one minute to the next what country you, the U.S. Empire is going to invade. And at the same time, they're militarizing the border, increasing the police, expanding the prisons. This is U.S. war on a global scale. And our weapon, our only weapon against it, is our unity. It's our solidarity. It's standing together 
and not letting them attack or criminalize or demonize any struggle in the world. We saw what happened with the U.S. lies, provocations, fake news, just now with Syria. We know the nuclear threats against the people of Korea. We know the thousand cases around the world. Every one of these things are an act of war. And the wars come home. The wars come home in racism, in attacks on all people of color, in raids and roundups against immigrant communities, in the largest prison population in the world, and some of the worst health care in the world. When we're here today protesting, we're standing against every U.S. base, whether it's in Korea, or Libya, or the war in Yemen, whether it's a coup attempt against Venezuela, or Honduras. Every one of these wars we got to address. The attacks on the Black Lives Matter movement and on our immigrant sisters and brothers. This is part of the war coming home. So we stand together and every one of the demands are against Trump, it's against the Republicans, it's against the Democratic Party too. They're both parties of war. They're parties of war. And they stand for the entire war of the machine of the oil corporations and the banks. So our unity, let's keep it together. Let's keep struggling. Let's keep reaching out because that is a weapon. Unity, solidarity. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people united. is with the power of the people. We are here today through our presence to demonstrate that people in this country are not prepared to give a blank check to the madness of this war machine. We are here today to raise our voices in our position to say we are not going to allow you to wage war in our name without opposition. We are here today to demonstrate to the world that we are in solidarity with all those who are on the receiving end of this madness. We're here today to say that we oppose the axis of evil, the axis of resistance, the axis of domination, that axis of domination the U.S., NATO, and Europe. We are here to say to the world that we will struggle with you. We are here to put our voices and our bodies on the line. Why? Because look at what we are up against. We are up against not only a war machine represented by the corporations and the media, we're up against a war machine that's represented by and supported by both of the corporate reactionary bourgeois parties. We are up against a conspiracy 
that is trying to railroad the people into supporting this madness. That's why those of us in the Black Alliance for Peace, we're clear. We say not one drop of working class or poor people's blood in support of the capitalist oligarchy. We say now one drop of anybody's blood for this backward, racist, settler colonial system. We say that we're going to build a massive movement. We're going to connect ourselves once again. And we're going to build a movement that's going to put an end once and for all to this madness. All power to the people. Let's organize, let's struggle, and let's win. No more wars, no more lies, no more bombs in our skies. No more wars, no more lies, no more bombs in our skies. who's a co-founder of Code Pink and author of books on Saudi Arabia and Iran. Give it up for our media. So I don't know if any of you listen to the mainstream media, but this morning on the talk shows, they talked about the bombing of Syria as something that was done in the name of decency and humanitarianism. So this is the country, the United States, that in the name of decency has destroyed Iraq, destroyed Libya, participating with the Saudi regime in the destruction of Yemen. It is the country that is giving Israel the weapons that it needs to crush the Palestinians or try to crush the Palestinians, especially in Gaza right now. It is the same regime that will not allow even investigation into Israel's excessive force in Gaza. The regime that is giving weapons to the Sisi government in Egypt. This is the government in the United States that just intervened in Syria for decency and humanitarianism. Hypocrites! Hypocrites! Don't forget Ferguson! In the name of decency and humanitarianism, there are many things that we can do for the Syrian people. On these same talk shows this morning, David Billiband from the International Rescue Committee said the United States had taken in a total of 44 Syrian refugees in this fiscal year. I say shame on the U.S. government. If you look at the millions of refugees that are now living in neighboring countries like Turkey, like Lebanon, like Iraq, and then you look at Germany that has taken in a million refugees. In the name of decency and humanitarianism, we should open our doors and welcome the Syrian refugees to the U.S. Just like we should all open our doors to immigrants. I also say in the name of humanitarianism, we should open the U.S. Treasury and give money to refugees around the world who are suffering, especially as a result of U.S. wars. And there is one thing the U.S. can do around the world to stop the suffering of the people, and that is why I'm holding up this sign that says, Diplomacy, not war. Whether it's around North Korea, or in the case of Iran, where the Trump administration wants to take us out of the Iran nuclear deal on May 12th and move us towards a path to another catastrophic war. We have to say everywhere around the world, if indeed we want to be known 
as people who are decent and humanitarian. Let's force our government to stop bombing people around the world and instead support diplomacy and wars and give support to the refugees all over the world who need our help. Thank you. Greetings, brothers and sisters, comrades. I bring solidarity greetings from the only political party that has peace and nonviolence as one of its main principles. The only political party where every single candidate who runs for office must say that they believe in peace and will fight for peace, whether abroad or in this country. It is the Green Party of the United States. And we say not only it is important to be here because of the atrocities in Gaza and the bombing of Syria and Yemen, but for what continues to go on around the world, we must close every military base. And here we must dismantle the military industrial complex that is bringing the capitalist dollars into the pockets of the rich and starving the poor in this country, attacking Latinos, attacking our black brown brothers and sisters, attacking the LGBT community and immigrants. So we stand with all the anti-war activists and say, today is the beginning of raising our voices to end the wars perpetuated by the United States. Thank you. From Iraq, from Iraq to the Philippines, stop the U.S. war machine! From Iraq to the Philippines, stop the U.S. war machine! All right, now, now up next is Margaret Kimberly. She's the Black ed Agenda Report Editor and Senior Columnist. United National Anti-War Coalition Administrative Committee to Black Alliance for Peace. Give it up for Martin Kimberly! Why do I mention her name? The United Kingdom, one of the axes of evil, along with France and the United States, began their false flag operation a few weeks ago, claiming that Russia had poisoned this woman and her father, but they inconveniently survived, and she's now being held a prisoner. And we must remember this when we are told about the free world and the civilized nations the ones that steal, that steal the most. All of the countries of the free world, it's interesting, they all became wealthy through theft of human beings, literally, through theft of resources. And let us not forget this when we are told that they are right, and they are good, and they are free, because they are not. Let's also remember something else. It's easy to hate Donald Trump. It's not hard. But let's remember that this war effort is completely bipartisan. Yeah! The Democratic Party gave Donald Trump $80 million, billion, sorry, dollars he asked for in the defense budget increase. Most members of the Congressional Black Caucus voted on this military budget increase. And then they will pretend when they cut the budget for human needs, they will pretend to be upset. But we know not to believe them. We know that they are liars. We know that they are all in cahoots together. We know that they are hypocrites. And that there is one bipartisan war party in this country. 
So however we resist, truly resist, it must be with the knowledge that we are our own friends here and not the people that we are told are going to rescue us. We will save ourselves. And that is why we're all here today. Clearly all of you know that. But don't ever forget it. Thank you so much and power to the people. So next we're going to have Noriko uh, Oyama uh, from the Okinawa Peace Appeal. Hello everybody. I am, my name is Nori Oyama. I'm from Okinawa, originally Okinawa. Anyway, in Okinawa, Japan, the US, uh, US and Japan has been... I need my glass, I'm sorry. Alright, take your time. In Okinawa, Japan, the US and Japan are proceeding a plan to build Found the US, new US, US military base on Hanoko Bay. Okinawa had been protesting for more than 20 years. Hiroji Yamashiro is one of our leaders. He was in jail for five months before his trial for non-violent action of the protest. Today, I would like to read a message from Hiroji. Good afternoon. It's okay. Good afternoon to all our friends attending the spring action. I greatly appreciate the support we received from so many American people in our struggle for justice on Okinawa. For decades, Okinawa has, has su suffered from discrimination and forced sac sacrifice by the Japanese government. They recently mobilized as many as 100 riot priests to form all over the mainland to suppress local non-violent protest against the building six new helipads for U.S. Marine, Marines Osprey in the forest of Kakae. The construction of the new U.S. military base in Hedoko is just the latest of a long history of oppression against which we have protested. Our struggle is a fight for justice for Okinawa and to obtain, object to the violence perpetrated by the Japanese government and the U.S. military against the Okinawan people. After being put through a legal trial for a year, on March 14th, I received a sentence of two years in prison, suspended for three years. The judge only focused on the petty crimes of the actions and ignored that these non-violent actions were part of our protest. We are appearing the sentence to high court. The trial is just one of more tactic by the Japanese government to crush the people of Okinawa in the just fight against the new base in Hiroko. Now that most legal instructions have been lifted, I have returned to the pro protest at the Camp Schwab Gate. I am determined to do my best, believing that definitely and desperately will stop the construction of the new base in Hinoko. Our fight against this base is not just about injustice. According to a new discoveries, the ecology of the sea of Hinoko is very complicated. The sea floor of a construction site is very fragile. In addition, the geologic the fault has been recently discovered. So there are big technical challenges and risk of the planned construction. We will never give up until the dead construction plan is abandoned. My friend in America, I thank you for your strong support and the many warm messages we received from you. And please, Work with us 
the people of Okinawa to stop wars waged by the United States anywhere in the world. Thank you. I now I'd like to introduce Reverend Kim, a leader of the Justice Committee of the Lisa of East Church, the Executive Director of the U.S. National Committee, to actualize June 15, 2000, North-South Joint Declaration, and he will be followed by Chris Silvera. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kim. First, we extend our profound solidarity to the people of Syria. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We strongly denounce the US, UK, and France for using fabricated evidence to justify the illegal bombing of Syria. Our solidarity also goes out to the people of Palestine, Iran, and many others who are fighting hard to fend off U.S. imperialism. I want, to share, I want to share with you how the U.S. has suddenly shifted its approach with North Korea. To put it simply, North Korea has won against the threat of U.S. imperialism. The U.S.'s hostile policy of nuclear war games and economic sanctions have failed. North Korea is a nuclear state that is capable of defending itself from U.S. threat. With this victory by North Korea, the U.S. has no choice but to take the face of negotiations and ending the conflict. The Trump regime's decision to join North Korea in a summit, summit shows that even the U.S. government knows war is no longer an option with North Korea. And in South Korea, through a powerful struggle, the people collapsed the rep repressive right-wing puppet regime that had been under, under the control of the U.S. The South Korean people established a new government that has promised to stand for the people. We know that the struggle against imperialism is a wrong struggle for all of us here today. All of the people in the world will not give up. We will continue to struggle to fight the power and control of imperialism. We will struggle in solidarity with each other to achieve justice, self-determination, and peace. Through this international struggle, we will surely have our victory. Our Korean is the demand of Korean people are very simple. Debu, Chokte Jungche, Pegyara! Start abolishing all hostile policy against North Korea DPRK. Peace! 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 U.S. troops are all of South Korea. Yeah. Yeah. The people united will never be defeated.
But people united will never be defeated. Thank you. Glory in the people struggle. And up next, I have Chris Silvia, Secretary Treasurer of Teamsters Local 808 and Coalition of Black Trade Unionists. Afterwards, we'll have Yuri speak. Good afternoon. Power to the people. I don't really have a speech, but I got some questions. Dr. King said the choice was nonviolence or non-existence. So I ask these questions. Why are the churches not protesting? Why are the unions not striking? Why does our government love war more than peace? Why does our nation prefer submarines to pensions? Why do we prefer missiles over health care? Why do we prefer bombs over mass transportation? Why do we prefer war to jobs with a living wage? Why does our elected politicians never worry about the budget when it comes to war, but our budget conscious when it comes to education? Teachers pay free tuition for the students. Why do we elect these warmongers? Why do we dehumanize Palestinians? Why do we marginalize African Americans? Why do we not pay our women equally? You should note the forces arrayed against Syria. They are the colonizers of the darker people of this world. The bombs and missiles in Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan explode at home. That's a little bit take of Martin Luther King's words. They destroy the hope and possibilities for a decent America. Malcolm said you cannot separate peace from freedom because no one can be at peace unless he has his freedom. King says don't let anybody make you think God chose America as his divine messianic force to be a sort of policeman of the whole world. He went on to say that war is a poor chisel to carve out tomorrow. Brothers and sisters, we the people have to stand. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of it. Thank you. Next up we have Yuri, a member of No Duck Go, a dedicated anti-war and anti-imperialist organization and avid supporter of peaceful reunification of Korea based in New York City. Uh, she will be followed by Somia Aromi. We denounce the illegal bombings by the U.S., France, and U.K. on Syria! We denounce all U.S. bombings! And I'm with Nodotor for Korean Community Development. We of Nodotor look forward to the prospect of a U.S. North Korea summit as well as the upcoming summit between the two Koreas. Since Trump's inauguration, tensions between North Korea and the United States have only continued to escalate. Despite these tensions, however, South and North Korean governments began to engage directly earlier this year. Their efforts in opening up channels of communication after 10 years and cooperating in the Winter Olympics paved the way for the upcoming summit meetings. In order for there to be positive outcomes, the U.S. must engage in fair negotiations. This means the U.S. must be willing to give up its war threats against North Korea. The U.S. needs to stop joint military exercises with South Korea. 
Korea. Yeah. Which simulate bombings against North Korea. The 1953 armistice, which temporarily ended the fighting of the Korean War, has yet to be replaced with a permanent peace treaty. There will be no peace, nor denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, unless a treaty ends the Korean War. We call on the U.S. to follow South Korea's lead and work towards peaceful negotiations to end the Korean War. And we want reconciliation and reunification of the Korean Peninsula. We call on the following from the U.S. government. Stop the annual war games provoking war on the Korean Peninsula. Sign a peace treaty with North Korea. Negotiate a fair agreement for denuclearization. Withdraw U.S. troops from South Korea. Normalize relations with North Korea. That's all I have to say today. Before I announce the next speaker, can the Raging Grannies please move to the front of the stage? Thank you. Yeah. Next, we're going to have um, Somia el a Yemeni American community activist, co-organized the first Saudi Prince protest in New York City. She works for empowerment for Arab American women, and she will be followed by Teresa Gutierrez. <laughs> neighborhoods 
and they kept thousands and thousands of innocent kids and women and all those people. We are here to ask the government and to, uh, to ask all the people in the United States of America to stand with us and to stop this war that USA causes abroad and, and using our money tax to, uh, to support our people here and to create a new jobs for our people in the United States of America. On behalf of my Yemeni American community, I say thank you very much for being lovely human beings for peace. No to the war in Syria. No to the war in Yemen. Yes for a very civilized, peaceful, humanitarian United States of America.
all over the world and bring them home to work on peace and social justice issues. We American veterans, we veterans who have been to war and seen war say stop the wars and stop the bombing. We are veterans for peace and we want you all to work with us for peace and justice in this country. We need to spend money on the people in this country. We need to spend our money to take people, take care of people in need. So come and join with us in Veterans for Peace. Again, my name is Susan Schnall. I work with Veterans for Peace and also work with Vietnam Veterans Against the War. 50 years since the United States pulled troops out and we continue all over the rest of the world. So come and join with us. Please know that we are veterans and we are for Thank peace. You. Thank you. I'm with the Poor People's Campaign, a call for moral revival, and with the People's Congress of Resistance. I am a New York native, Harlem born, and I'm here because it's about time that we intersect all of our struggles. We must realize that the problem of one is the problem of all. Our oppressors know this. That's why they keep us separated in our silos. There is no coincidence. Uh, the fact that the IDF trained American police officers is no coincidence. Yeah. It is not a coincidence that the people of Syria, Palestine, New York, 
Ferguson, Baltimore, Oakland are under hyper surveillance. Yes! It is no coincidence that these police officers are using the same military grade weapons that are used in every hood around the world. They are all oppressive forces. We need to unite the poor people of this country with our family abroad. We need to realize that the people are not poor because of their own personal choices, which is the narrative that they tell us. These communities have been made poor. They have been made unstable by U.S. militarization home and at home and abroad. But instead of finding an end to poverty, they increase intervention. They increase law enforcement in our communities. Our campaign, the Poor People's Campaign, is highlighting the four evils. Today we focus on militarization, but we must not forget that our system thrives on racism. Our system thrives on poverty. Our system thrives on pollution. The biggest polluter in the world is the U.S. military. No matter how, no matter how early you turn off your light bulbs today, it will not replace the damage done by the bombs dropped in Syria. It is, it is no coincidence that on the same day that we sell, that we mourned the assassination of Martin Luther King, a brother was killed in Brooklyn. We must stand together, all people of all denominations, and fight this this beast. So just together one time. They have money for war, but can't feed the poor. They have money for war, but can't feed the poor. They have money for war, but can't feed the poor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Up next, we have Henry Lowendorf, the co-chair of the Greater New Haven Peace Council, Executive Committee of the U.S. Peace Council. It looks like a pretty big crowd from here. Thank you for coming. Better a cold day than a hot war. We understand that wars start with lies. These wars have started with lies. The people here support the rule of law. The U.S. government doesn't support the rule of law. The people here support democracy. The U.S. government takes down democracies all over the world. Now before I end, I want to, I'm going to make an assignment for you. It's very important because what we see today is that our elected officials do not want to talk about the militarization of the United States. They don't want to talk about how the guns that kill the children abroad are killing the children here. They don't want to talk about how the money, the 1.2 trillion, yes, 1.2 trillion dollars a year for past, present, and future wars is not being spent at home. That's money stolen from you and me and our neighbors. We, we have a movement in the United States to bring the message home with our neighborhoods, in our towns, in our cities. We need to have a conversation that gets past the corporate media who also don't want to talk about the militarization of the United States. We have to have that conversation that widens the circles very broadly. And we've started that in a number of cities in the United States. New Haven, my city, we've started it. What we've done is work with members of our city council to hold public hearings, to hold public hearings where we talk about what we could do in the city if we had the money that now goes to war. The billions of dollars that go to war could pay for potholes, could pay for food, could pay for our health. They could pay for education. The teachers that are striking in West Virginia, in Kentucky, in Oklahoma, we have to support but we have to recognize that the money for them and for their schools is being blown up all around the world. 
We need to have these conversations. So, in a number of cities around the country, we have started this. We've gotten our city councils to hold public hearings. We've asked the department heads for the city to talk about what they could do in public works, in public health, in education, if they had all of this money that is now blowing up the world. And in New York City, the biggest city in the country, Council Member Rodriguez is taking this up with public hearings. And there is a coalition of groups of peace, environment, labor, that is working to make these huge public hearings so that the conversation goes broadly, so that we bring in people. We talk about what we can do with this money, what we can do with this money, what we should be doing with this money. Stop the wars, put the money back at home, bring the troops home, bring the money home, put it to work here. Thank you. Next up, we have Abdul Wali already from the United Yemeni American Organization and a community organizer for peace. Hands off Yemen! Peace for Yemen! 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 Hands off Yemen! Assalamu alaikum. Peace upon everybody. Uh, I, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming today. I know it's very cold. Everybody want to go home, but we still have to march to uh, Trump Tower. Yeah. And we have to do it because we came here to stop the war. We came here for justice. We're looking here for justice. And we have, there is a lot of people who need us overseas. And, and I came here exactly today to send the message to the Arab audience, to the world. This is the United States. This is the United States of America. This is the people here. The United States is not the President Trump. This is the people who care about everybody in the world. The, those of the people of love. Those who tell who, that we are here to tell everybody. And in the Middle East. And in, uh, in, in Afghanistan. In Iraq. In Yemen. In Syria. We tell them we are come here for justice. We come here for you. We feel your pain. We understand what you guys are going through. We need to help you. There is no hate from the people of the United States. The people of the United States love every, everyone. But the politics, but but Trump, Trump, he created a war overseas and he going behind it. He taking millions of dollars. He taking millions of dollars for Saudi Arabia for the silence of Yemen. He killing everybody to make money. He don't care. Today we have kids, they have no school in Syria. Today we have kids, they have no food in Yemen. Today we have no water. Today every 14 million people is under the flow of poverty. It's a starvation, it's not even poverty anymore. So we came here to say to everyone, war, uh, stop the war in Yemen. Yemen cannot wait. Syria cannot wait. We have to be, we have to incur, to incur, to incur everyone to come out with us, to be united against even Mr. Trump. And we have to be impeached. And he realized what's going on. Trump has to leave the presidency if he's gonna start, they're just killing the people. If he's gonna start supporting the war. We have to do the President Trump. We have to do the Congress right now. Today, we are the United States of America. We are the people. The, the, the government is by the people, not by the president. Not by the president himself. T today, we have to tell everyone, we all love you overseas. We all love you people in Yemen. And uh, Yemen people love the United States of America. We love the people of the United States. But we hate Trump. We love Trump. We love him. He's killing everyone. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for coming. This is my son, Abdel. Hello? Just one second, boy. One, one second. Just you want to say something. What do you want to say? I want to say this to Donald Trump to stop the war in Yemen and killing the kids in Yemen and Syria.
Up next, we have Evan Prince, the uh, from U a student from University of Connecticut. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming out. I just want to talk about being a student in this uh, militarized country. Uh, I'm Evan Fritz. I'm a student from Connecticut, uh, University of Connecticut. Uh, over the last year, Connecticut State University system lost $150 million in public funding. The Democrats called this a big victory because it wasn't the $300 million cut the Republicans called for. In any case, undergraduate students' tuitions have almost doubled over the last decade. Class sizes are soaring, and the majority of the faculty are adjuncts and graduate professors who make less than minimum wage. At the same time, the university itself acts as a big subsidy to civilian and military corporations, giving them the space and personnel to carry out research and experiments. Last year, the winners of the senior engineering design projects were connected with Medtronic, a multinational biomedical firm with huge contracts with the Department of Defense, Pratt & Whitney, and other vestiges of the military-industrial complex. These are the forces shaping our education system. While the military gets trillions of dollars of direct and indirect funding from our taxes, and corporations get even more state funding through tax breaks, public-private partnerships, and, of course, the everyday exploitation of workers in all walks of life, students are paying more than ever, and their education system is geared towards the pro proliferation of weapons, environmentally destructive industries, and the techniques of exploitation. Saying students are not drafted, are not fighting U.S. imperialism's wars, is an illusion. At my own school, the University of Connecticut, the Information Technologies and Engineering Building has a big certification of excellence from the Department of Homeland Security, which deports millions of people every year. We students are working to bolster the profits and production of capitalists, big and small, and we need to realize that our real political allies are the workers, which many of us are anyways, and not big business in their parties. <laughs> The truth is that it often feels like we are perpetually losing, but we have real wins that we need to embrace and study. What are those wins? Well, for starters, Iraq wasn't Vietnam. Teachers in Oklahoma, West Virginia, and Kentucky have been dragging their state governments through the coals. They are showing that real power lies in organizational independence for workers. At UConn, the Graduate Employee Union just won its second contract after almost seven months of fighting by organizing its rank and file. We need we need to look at what is happening in France, where students and rail workers are stopping production, are putting their own cap capitalist government over the coals. We need a mass movement of workers and students to say we need free quality education and we can pay for it with the money spent killing students and young workers all across the globe. Money for education and public health, not bombs and private wealth. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Dr. Khaldun McCool from the Syrian American War Association from Allentown, Pennsylvania with many Syrian American activists. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you for being here uh, with this cold uh, weather. Uh, we said it uh, in 2013 to President Obama, Hand of Syria. Against the coalition of Hand of Syria saying to President Trump, Hand of Syria, you have no reason to bomb Syria. You have no reason to bomb Syria. You bomb Syria with 103 missiles. It cost $200 million. American people need it. Our school need it. Our health system need it. Our social system need it. Syrian people didn't do use chemical weapon, don't use this excuse. You, they tried to use it in 2013, and last year just a report came out, and they said they have no evidence of using any chemical weapon. Now, after three years, you're coming back to use the same argument. Any army gonna use chemical weapon on innocent people after they won? They are not ever going to use it. I don't believe the American soldier will use it. No any army in the world will use it. Don't use that excuse just to bomb the Syrian people, to destroy the love of the Syrian people, to support the terrorists, to support the kind of ISIS and their affiliate. Don't follow Saudi Arabia. Don't follow Qatar and Turkey. They are the trouble in the area. They are bombing. They are bombing our brother and sister in Yemen. They are bombing 
our brother and sister in Yemen. They are killing innocent people. I didn't hear you anyone talking about the Yemeni in the, in the United Nations. What about the invasion of Turkey to Syria? Nobody talk about it. The Turkish uh, deployed their military to the northern Syria and we have over 250,000 refugees from the Kurd moved to the Syrian territory and under the Syrian government. They, nobody mentioned it in the United Nations, they didn't take any decision against the illegal invasion the, about Turkey. They didn't take any illegal discussion even about the reason to be in Syria, the United States Army in Syria illegally. Please guys, let's stand together and say no war. Hand off Syria! Hand off Syria! Hand off Yemen! Hand off Yemen! Hand off Venezuela! Hand off Venezuela! Hand off Ecuador! Hand off Ecuador! Thank you guys! Hand off Puerto Rico! Hand off Puerto Rico! Next we have Ariella Riafos from G Rebels also a Pace University student group on gun violence and military violence, and she will be followed by Jan. Thank you. The fascist media keeps talking about how we're intervening in the name of human rights. I say that's bullshit. We have no right to intervene in the name of human rights when black people are killed with impunity in our streets. When immigrant families from Latin America, the Caribbean, Asia, and Africa are being torn apart and terrorized by ICE and Border Patrol. When natives were gassed and attacked by the state on behalf of corporations for protecting their own land. When discrimination against our LGBT family is legal and supported by the state. When millions of children go hungry every night, when 11 percent of Puerto Rico is still without power, when the U.S. looks the other way, while thousands of Palestinians, Syrians, and Yemenis are being killed daily because of their allies' interests, the U.S. is the largest terrorist in the world. concentrated on exposing contemporary welcome influence of the Obama's industry on public policy, the corruption in government that has led to the projection of power, warmongering, and fear-mongering policies that have completely exasperated new arms races, how they put it, in various theaters of operations. We must arm ourselves with the facts the contemporary military-industrial complex is very real. What should be widely known as a clear and present danger has been hidden from plain view by the politicians, by corporate media, and even our institutions of higher education. We must hold our government officials accountable. Threats to vote them out of office are insufficient. Legalized bribery in the form of campaign contributions and the promises of the revolving door have resulted in the United States government doing the bidding of the armament industry. We must make sure that the revisionist, glorifying, glossy legacy memoirs do not stand. We must
must arm ourselves with information. There has been little reference made to the consequences of the militarization of Obama's pivot to Asia. There has been little references made to the arrangements that granted Lockheed Martin use of the Burlington Vermont Airport for the use of the F-35 fighter jets in disregard of the protesters in Vermont. There has been little references to General James Madison. We must arm ourselves with knowledge. We must arm ourselves with wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we are going to have Mark Elliott Stein from World Beyond War. Please give a hand. Thank you. It is such an honor to be here with all of these smart people fighting for what is right. I'm with World Beyond War. We are a group that is dedicated to what we are all dedicated to. Um, this, is a, this is a diverse coalition. A lot of people come from a lot of different backgrounds, but we all know one thing. If we don't fix this, if we the people do not fix this, nobody else is going to fix this. Um, the media is not going to fix this. No political party is going to fix this. I don't think we're going to fix it in November. Right here, all of us, we are in charge. We are the ones who are going to have to make a difference. I believe we can. Uh, it has been great to listen to all of you. I've learned so much from getting to know some of you and every single person here. Thank you for being here. Never doubt that this is important. This matters. You being here right now helps. Keep it up. Thank you. Hello, folks. Yeah, I know folks are really anxious. We are going to be marching soon. Just hang in there. We just have a long list of folks who are going to be speaking. And up next, we have Florida Torrocini from the Chair of Peace Action Manhattan, from Manhattan. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm sort of an old-fashioned guy, Florindo. I'm going to talk about, in September 2017, the UN General Assembly voted to ban all nuclear weapons, make all nuclear weapons illegal. A lot of people don't know that. The United States boycotted the treaty negotiations. 57 countries have signed the treaty to ban all nuclear weapons so far. We the people are sovereign here. The government is just our representatives. We rule, not them. It's time for the people of America and Russia to rid ourselves of the repressive, violent, destructive, undemocratic regimes. Does anybody have a cell phone? Call the Congress. What do you have there? Call this number. Demand your senators and representative to sign the Nuclear Weapons Ban Treaty. Thank you. Woo, thank you. All right. Up next, we have Bernadette uh, L. Struggles. International League of People's Struggles is um, an international movement that's out here to represent all the folks from speaking in regards to the struggles that's going on all over the world. So give it up for Bernadette. Imperialism is war! 
Sisters and brothers, somewhere in this world today, there's a small group of business people, of corporate warmongers, who are laughing because every missile that hits Syria, they profit. Every gun that shoots a black person, they profit from. And they laugh at us because they believe that they control the destiny of peoples, they control the markets, they control our future. But they are wrong. It is not the corporate warmongers that are decisive. It is only the mass movement of people struggling that is decisive. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Angela Castello and I'm here to protest U.S. intervention in Ecuador as part of the Plan Condor, which means that uh, the U.S. wants to uh, attack all the go progressive governments in Latin America. As part of the plan, uh, it was to jail the vice president of Ecuador elected democratically. His name is Jorge Glass. He is in jail because he didn't go along with the policies of the president who is turned to the right and is supported by the right. We are here to demand the liberation of Jorge Glass and uh, to put our policies, people's policies in Ecuador and to continue the policies of Korea which work people's policies and, and for the well-being of the people in general. Yes. He, this new president is dismantling all these policies and we are fighting that. But first we want our vice president elected out of jail and we want your help to demand the liberation of Jorge Glass. Thank you. 
with the denuclearization of North Korea in his top agenda. And his and previous U.S. governments are successful in painting North Korea as a rogue nation that plays with nuclear weapons and threatens global peace and security. But, my friends, is that right? Is that right assert, assert, assertion? I don't believe so. We all know North Korea's nuclear program is not the issue. The root problem is the U.S. hostility against North Korea and its people. That has been going on for last damn 65 years. Since the signing of the truce during the Korean War in 1953. With U.S. troops in South Korea, annual nuclear military exercises, and all sorts of trade embargoes and economic sanctions imposed by the United States and under the name of the UN, North Korea was basically strangled until either give in or collapse. And the United States refused all this time to the demands of North Korea to sign the peace treaty to officially end the Korean War. North Korea had no other option but to speak to U.S. the only language that they will listen to bring U.S. to the peace talk. North Korea states they believe in the ultimate nuclear-free Korean Peninsula and the world. And North Korea also stated they are willing to give up entire nuclear program in exchange for the peace treaty and normalization of diplomatic relationship with the United States. And you should know that North Korea will not be the same case scenario like what they were able to do in Libya and Iraq. So, my friends, we are it is now time for the U.S. to respond to the call from international community for the lasting peace in Korea, which is long overdue. So I say, no war in Korea, peace treaty now. I said, no war in Korea, peace treaty now. No war in Korea, peace treaty now. Thank you. So we have our last speaker here, and then we're going to be marching. Who's ready to march? Who's ready to march? We have our last speaker here. We have Felipe. We have some other speakers at Trump Tower, but for here we have Felipe from Veterans for Peace and World Indigenous Forum. Nice. Tony Aronstein, we need you at the DJ booth. Tony Aronstein, come to the DJ booth. See I'm not going to shout at you. I'm going to say I love you. Thanks for being here. We're here to represent our children and our grandchildren in this world. At the present time, there's relatives here, indigenous relatives from all over the world. And you are too. I don't care where you came from in this world, you came from a tribe. You think about that. You came from a tribe. And we're all indigenous to this land. We have the right to walk the land in a good way. We have a right to stop the war. We have political prisoners. We have one political prisoner who's been in prison over 35 years, and that's Leonard Peltier. I want to say, free Leonard Peltier! Free Leonard Peltier! Free Leonard Peltier! Thank you.